Well, good morning and welcome to Asylum Hill Congregational Church on this fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. Friends, Asylum Hill Congregational Church is an open and affirming congregation in the United Church of Christ. We gather together today here at 814 Asylum Avenue and in many other places and spaces across the globe to worship God and to give thanks for this one glorious life each and every one of us has been given. We gather in these moments or in moments to come to be reminded that no matter who we are, no matter where we are on life's journey, we are, we are a unique, each and every one of us, a unique and necessary part of this wild endeavor that we call the church. So to those of you here, those of you live streaming, welcome. Those of you who are watching this in the hours and days to come via YouTube, welcome. Welcome members, welcome guests, welcome old friends and new friends, beloveds. May this service bring you both comfort and joy as well as challenge today. I would ask that you would please make sure, whether it's now or whether it's in a time to come, that you sign our virtual pew pad. Uh, this can be found on the homepage of our church's website, ahcc.org, and this helps us to be able to connect with one another and to know who it is both near and far that is worshiping and gathering together. Also, I would, make I would ask that you make sure you are connected via your preferred mode of social media and YouTube, as well as subscribing to our Friday email, which is really still one of the best ways for you to keep connected with this community of faith and to know and to keep current on all of the programs and the events and the opportunities for learning and service and worship. I want to remind you that as we draw near to the winter solstice on Tuesday, we will gather as a community for the longest night service at 7 p.m. here in our sanctuary. The longest night service will be one of lament and healing, a service where you can come as you are and be lifted up to the power and the light and love of God's presence. On Christmas Eve, which is Friday of this week, we have a number of services happening. Uh, at 4.30 in our parking lot, we will host a live nativity. We did this last year, uh, sort of out of need and necessity, and it turned out to be a wonderful, wonderful service. So we are going to do that again, a live nativity, 4.30 in our church parking lot. This is a very family-friendly service, and we ask that not only that you dress or bundle up for whatever the weather might be on Friday at 4.30, but that you also bring a chair uh, to sit on in our parking lot as we engage in that service. Eight o'clock here in the sanctuary, we will have a traditional candlelit Christmas Eve service. That will be live stream as well as in person. And then at 11.30, and this is a change from what we have done in the past at 11.30, not at 11.00, but at 11.30, we will gather for a Christmas Eve vigil. Something, as I said, a little bit different. This will be a 30-minute uh, service, and we will begin inside here in the sanctuary. However, as we welcome the 12 o'clock hour, we will move outdoors, taking the light of Christ out into the world on what will be Christmas Day. And then on Christmas Day, as early as 6 a.m., you can watch for an email to drop in your inbox. Uh, this will be a link to a very special Christmas Day service that you can enjoy at your leisure with a cup of coffee in your pajamas around the tree at whatever time on Christmas Day you would like. Um, so that will, that will be our service. That will be a virtual service only on Christmas Day. Want to just make sure that each of you recognizes and knows that you are invited back here to 814 Asylum Avenue today at 1 o'clock as well as next Sunday at 1 o'clock for the serving of our free weekly community meal. This is a wonderful, 
wonderful ministry, and it's a great way for us to draw near to one another and to our neighbors. So we will continue uh, our free community meal throughout the holidays. Friends, let us now bring our hearts, our minds, our spirits into a spirit of worship. If you might rise in body or in spirit and let us be called into worship now. Beloveds, we are seeking deeper faith, a place of belonging, the feeling that God is here in this room. Beloveds, we are seeking joy that overflows the movement of the spirit, a hand to hold when alone in the dark. We are seeking the freedom to be, the courage to love, the conviction to act in the face of injustice. We are seeking, but here in this space, we are found. Take a deep breath. This is your sanctuary. God is found. We are found.
Please be seated. And now join together as we light the candle of love. God's love is like an open door. God's love is the street light that guides us home. God's love is a warm bed to fall into. God's love is a table with room for you. God's love is a crackling fireplace. God's love is the sun that streams through the windows. God's love is a roof over our heads and the floor beneath our feet. God's love is a home for you, for me, for neighbors and strangers, for family and friends. God's love draws near to each of us. Today, we light the candle of love to remind us of this truth. May it burn brightly in this space and even brighter in our
As we approach this time of prayer, I would like to mention a special day that is coming up. Our dear friend Carol Eddy is turning 102 just after Christmas. So if you would like to send her a birthday card, please feel free to send it to the church and I can make sure that it gets to her. During this time of prayer, I will begin the prayer as we have been the last few weeks with poetry. Let us enter into a spirit of prayer. When Adam saw Eve, the first thing he said was, at last. And when I first fell in love, God became real faster than I could imagine. When my brother was born, I learned the size of my heart. And when my mom held my hand, I knew the love that willed that heart to start. And without them, how would I know love? Without others, how would I learn grace or music, confidence or trust? And without the sun, how could the earth grow life? And without you, how could I know God with green eyes, God with brown skin, God with wrinkles, God within? So I have come to believe we belong to one another, families and friends, neighbors and strangers, we belong to one another. And I have come to see the space between you and me as nothing short of holy ground. So take off your shoes and draw near. Together is where God is found. God of compassion and community, we are grateful that we find your love and grace in those around us. We are grateful that we are designed to depend on one another, that we need each other for love, for joy, for fulfillment, for survival, that when we draw near to one another, we discover strength, hope, and love. On this Christmas Sunday, we remember those who lost family, friends, and property in Kentucky and the surrounding area. We pray for all those young and old who experienced the fear and trauma of those storms. And we pray for the stamina and resources as they begin the long process of rebuilding. You know, spirit of love, that many of all ages are struggling with emotional wellness. Please give hope to those who are despondent and provide resources to those who feel alone. God of love, surround all who are grieving during the holidays with your love and care, particularly those in our community suffering recent and unexpected losses. Strengthen and heal those with COVID, we pray, and provide your comfort as we lament changed plans and canceled trips. Encourage and protect our healthcare workers and first responders as this pandemic continues. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, help us to remember that Jesus truly was Emmanuel, you with us, you incarnate, you breathing and laughing, hugging and crying, grieving and teaching. You, dearest Lord, know our journey, and we prepare to meet you anew each day. Because we know that you meet us in the suffering, and we meet you in the laughter and in the beauty of a sunset and in the wide eyes of a new baby. We meet you at the graveside and in the kayak and in the hospital bed. We meet you in times of silence, in cheers at the ballpark and ovations at Carnegie Hall. We meet you when unjust laws are overturned and when the plane lands, and when we see the faces of our loved ones after too long. We meet you in the memorial garden, and when reminiscing about Christmas's past, 
or watching the kids climb off the bus. We meet you in our pie making and present wrapping and tree trimming. We meet you when we remember loved ones gone too soon. And when we get the results of that medical test and when we sing our favorite hymn. We meet you when the prisoner is released, when we hear you're hired, and when we hear you're fired. God, we meet you at all of these moments, sacred and mundane, joy-filled and heartbreaking, because you have chosen to journey with us. You have chosen to meet us wherever we are. God of all mysteries, we meet you here and now in this sacred space, and we raise our voices together to say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reminds us that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like the shifting shadows. This church has been a gift to me. The people, the music, the sanctuary, the worship, the fellowship, and the programs, they have all helped keep me centered and connected during these past two years of constant change, disappointment, and worry. I am grateful that God connected me with you because you have helped me live into this pandemic with creativity, support, and hope. The goodness and positivity and hope of this very community is a truly a gift from God. During this time of offering, I invite you to consider returning to God a portion of what you have been given so that we can continue to be a place of purpose, impact, and love.
God of generosity. May everything we have, we recognize that it is a gift from you. May our gifts bring your love and compassion to those within and outside of our family of faith. And may they enable us to continue to be a refuge from despair and a source of hope. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me now? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And then Mary said to Elizabeth, the soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of this servant. Surely, from now on, all generations shall call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. These are the words of Mary, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
let us pray. Gracious and loving God, on this fourth Sunday in the season of Advent, we are filled with expectation. We long for your coming once again. We ask that you would make us aware of your nearness, that you would make us aware of how very close you are to each and every one of us now. Amen. So not so long ago, I was catching up with a member of this congregation a beloved I hadn't seen or had a lot of meaningful conversation with since really the start of the pandemic. As we sat across a table from one another sharing food and lots of hearty laughter, this beloved paused for a moment and then said with a much more serious tone, so Erica, I wanna ask, how have you been faring for the last 20 months? At first, I was a little taken aback. I wondered if this person knew something about me that I wasn't yet even aware of. I mean, as well as can be expected was my response. But this beloved wasn't satisfied, and they pressed. Yours is a very fleshy kind of ministry. So I can't imagine how difficult this has been for you throughout the pandemic. And for a moment, I found myself welling up. The question and the statement pierced my heart and I found the honesty and the care of this human being almost too much to bear, at least in a public setting, a fleshy kind of ministry. I have been thinking now about those words for weeks. And for those of you who know me, you know how apt that description is, not only of me, but also of my ministry. In fact, I preached a sermon some years ago entitled My Theology of Hugging. I've also preached sermons on the necessity and the power of human touch. And so it shouldn't surprise anyone that while in seminary, and Tracy can attest to this, one of my favorite topics in systematic theology was the incarnation. The word becomes flesh. It, it fascinates me, this idea that divine essence would break into human history and from her very own hands craft a most magnificent vessel in which to reveal himself, a human body, just like the ones you and I find ourselves in this very day. I mean, I want you to just sit with the power of that statement for just a moment. Divine essence crafts with her very own hands a most magnificent vessel in which to reveal himself. The creator of the universe, the creator of the universe who could have shown up in any which way they pleased, could have revealed their presence to us human beings in a million different ways, chose to show up by becoming one of us. It's almost ridiculous when you think about it. But that's exactly why that statement and that question from our beloved pierced so deeply. 
Our 2021 Advent theme at Asylum Hill Congregational Church is Draw Near. For the last three weeks, we have focused on drawing near to wonder and truth and justice. And today, on our fourth and final week of the Advent season, we are drawing near to one another. Which may seem almost a bit ironic, given, given the state of the world and the current COVID variants that are wrecking havoc on every nation across the globe. I mean, it's hard to think, isn't it? about drawing near to each other, given that we are still in a place where we must be careful about our fleshy interactions with others, right? It, it's almost counterintuitive. One of the hardest times in modern history, when too many have fallen ill, when too many have died, when the strain on our systems is reaching another breaking point, time when honestly all I want to do is wrap each of you up in my arms. A time when we all just need to be held, held in comfort and in love and reminded that we are not alone, no matter what is happening in our lives or around us in the world. A time when we can when we seek what can only be described as sanctuary. Which is why, which is why I think today's reading from Luke's gospel is so important and probably couldn't come at a better time. And if you've been following along with this Advent series, then you will remember that two weeks ago when we were drawing near to truth, we looked at John the Baptist's birth and his father Zechariah's prophetic and truth-filled words about who his son was to become. And so today, in these words from Luke's gospel, we are, in fact, going back in time as the story you just heard is about Elizabeth pregnant with John and Mary's visit to her beloved cousin. You see, after receiving the angel's extraordinary news, Mary retreats to Elizabeth and Zechariah's home to digest her new calling. She seeks refuge, physical safety, and emotional protection. Sound familiar? She received a safe haven, a home for her heart to soon sing God's praise. And the part of the story that I absolutely adore and think is vitally important for us today is the leaping of the child in Elizabeth's womb when Mary greets her. Did you catch it? Luke describes the scene. Mary rushes in to the house. And remember, Elizabeth wouldn't have known. She wouldn't have known Mary was coming. And Mary announces she's arrived. I hear her saying, calling out, Elizabeth, are you here? It's me, your cousin Mary, and I've come for a visit. And before the two can even embrace or catch up or share the news of what is happening to their bodies, God's love enters in and the child in Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy. And she knows. In 1883, Signe Hilding was born to Amanda Nicholas and Albert Hilding in a very rural area on the South Central Plains in Sweden, in a community known as Roke. Life in the late 19th century, especially in this remote part of the world, was hard. 
very hard. Which is why in 1904, at 21 years of age, Signe made the decision to say goodbye to her beloveds and the only home she'd ever known and board a boat bound for New York City in the United States of America. Her paperwork reveals she came through Ellis Island on November 13, 1904, and states that she was headed to Connecticut as she had been promised a job as a domestic worker in someone's home. Not long after she arrived, Signe met and fell in love with another Swedish immigrant living in Connecticut, Gustav Magnuson. The two started a family, and for several years when my mother was young, she and her parents lived with her maternal grandparents, Signe and Gustav. Those of you who follow me on social media know that for the last two weeks, I have been traveling with my mom and sister in Sweden. A Christmas gift my parents gave to my sister and I in 2019. And this past Wednesday, just four or five days ago, we had the opportunity to drive two and a half hours south of Stockholm to that very rural area known as Roke, the place where my mother's maternal lineage began. Using some old black and white photos as a guide, we were able to find the church of my ancestors and the tombstone, which stands on the place where my great-great-grandparents, Amanda Nicholas and Albert Hilding, were buried. And as I stood, as I stood looking out upon the great plains of Sweden, I became incredibly aware of the presence and the power of those who have gone before me. I heard their voices in the wind, and let me tell you, it was windy. And I saw their essence in the trees. And the very land called out to me. And this is what I heard. Beautiful girl, you are never alone because we are with you. You are made of us. We are the very blood running through your veins. It was as if my ancestors in that moment were drawing near to me in a way that went far beyond the physical relationship. It was as if they were crossing the planes of time and space and years. And they were there, right there. And something deep inside of me as I stood there, something deep inside of me leapt with joy. Beloveds, on this fourth and final Sunday of Advent 2021, when we contemplate together, drawing near to one another in the midst of what may seem like a never-ending pandemic, I want us to be reminded that the word Advent really means to move towards something or someone. The word Advent, the season in which we celebrate, is a season of moving towards something or someone. And that may not mean that may not mean that we can yet engage in the fleshy kind of ministry that I so long for. I mean, I'm wearing two masks today. And I know, I know that we are all getting tired of the masking and the social distancing and the ever-changing restrictions. But beloveds, the good news 
The good news for us this Advent season is the assurance beyond any shadow of a doubt that every kind of separation from God this world might throw at us can and is and will be overcome. You see, the incarnation, the word made flesh, the birth of Christ, which is the drawing near we all so long for, it's already here. It's already here. God is already here. God is within each and every one of us, mixed within the very blood that pulsates through your very veins in this hour. And God is all about us, protecting us and making herself known anew. Draw near, beloveds. Draw near. Draw near to one another, for God draws near today.
Before we receive the benediction, I absolutely must give a wonderful thank you to and to Jack Cox, and to Susan Carroll. Thank you so much for the beauty and the music and the spirit that you have provided to each and every one of us today. So thank you. Friends, receive now the benediction. May we go forth from this place engaging in fleshy ministry, engaging in a ministry that brings to life a God that loves us without borders. A Christ, a Jesus, a Lord, a Savior, who came and put on flesh to be one of us. And may we go forth knowing that each and every one of us is empowered with the Spirit to go forth and to bring life and light and grace and love out into the world. So friends, today, may we go, each of us, in peace. Amen.